I think this album is really a fusion of, uh, of all the musical experiences uh, I've made in my life. You know, there's my, uh, my jazz guitar playing, very intellectual and, you know, serious jazz albums. And then, as a songwriter, as a producer, I would work in different environments and write pop tunes, hip-hop tunes, R&B. And it's really the first time in my life I decided to, to bring these two worlds uh, together in my own music. It's a, it, it's a jazz project, you know, with a pop sensibility. Uh, the band is the same, it has uh, Tony Gray on bass and Mino Sinero on drums, which I've worked with, you know, basically my whole life. This is basically a really a big guitar album uh, with a lot of different guests, from Shaggy to Melanie Fiona, Ice-T, Zuccaro, and one of their prayers. So if you love guitar, you know, you're definitely gonna find something you like. If you love uh, great vocals, you got great vocals. And uh, I think anyone can really find something, you know, in this album that they can appreciate. For this album, I had to cover a, a U2 song. I picked one because of the unique lyrics and, and the amazing message that one has. I picked a, a new rising star, a jazz singer from Sweden, uh, Isabella Langren, and uh, I think that the result is it's amazing. Cause if summer's here, I'm still waiting there. And winter's here, and I'm still waiting there, yeah. I picked uh, a Bob Marley song, Waiting in Vain. In the mid-90s, I was stationed in uh, Aviano, Maniago, uh, in the Air Force Base. Uh, you know, it was the, the, the Kosovo War. And uh, I remember this uh, song, the Shaggy song called Bombastic, uh, coming on, you know, day and night. That song would really cheer me up many, many times. So with Shaggy, uh, do a collaboration with Shaggy was always mandatory for me. Cause I know how to do my thing. And uh, I brought in Reese to bring that that woman perspective, that, that, that sensual and that, that just the woman sensitivity. So me and Mino Sinello have been uh, playing together for the past, uh, I think, 20 years in uh, different groups, different albums. For this particular album, you know, besides playing drums, I said, Mino, you know, I really want you to, to sing and I want to write a song with you. Growing up, I was listening to Zucchero all the time, and then through the years I've seen doing these amazing duets with, uh, with Miles Davis, B.B. King, Eric Clapton. So, for me to be here, you know, with Zucchero doing a duet, it's like a really a, a big honor. As a kid, I always had uh, an amazing uh, amount <laughs> of discomfort in uh, education. There's always this this problem between me wanting to be a musician and playing music and uh, my parents, uh, teachers and the whole society, you know, being against it basically. We don't need no education. So for the wall I was able to, to call Ice-T and one of their prayers and, and read. Ice-T and M1 have brilliant minds. They were able to come up together with amazing lyrics. Uh, that they really speak about discomfort in society. Digital age, the bubble pop, now millions scrams from minimum wage. The Wind Cries Mary is a song I've always loved. Instead of choosing a, a rock singer, uh, I picked Melanie Fiona. The great Melanie Fiona was an amazing R&B singer and she created, uh, with her tone and her phrasing, uh, a really, really original uh, version of it. And the way Many years ago, uh, I remember being uh, on the road uh, in Italy and um, I decided to don't sleep and just to, to watch the, the, the sun rising. I could really feel there was going to be one of those amazing, uh, warm and just beautiful summer days. And, um, and I was really trying to, to put this, this emotion uh, that really caught me unexpected uh, that morning uh, into the song. And this is um, what the sun is rising, you know, was written. When you grow up in Italy, even before you know how to write and read words, so you're really small, you for sure know what a Ferrari is. I'm lucky that, you know, later on in life, you know, my, my drink came through, I was able to race a Ferrari and to own a Ferrari and, uh, you know, I really experienced it for myself. I really wanted to be able to 
to translate uh, the, the passion, the adrenaline, the speed um, into a song. So this is what Prancing Horse uh, is there for. So Fijo Maguado, it's uh, probably one of my favorite songs from uh, Cesare Voria. I wanted to do my, my tribute to her. And for the song, I called Claudia Cunha. I think that Claudia really brought to the song a lot of depth, uh, a lot of emotions, a lot of colors. Follow Me, it's an original tune uh, that I wrote with Algebra Blessed. Who knows what could happen? It's about you know, trusting another human being uh, and, and trusting a situation in a particular moment. And I, I think that you know, really goes well with the old spirit of the album. All of my music <laughs> comes from real life experiences. The distance. Once in a Blue Moon is the song that I wrote uh, many years ago. I remember that was probably the first time I really fell in love with somebody uh, really deeply. And uh, it was a much older woman than me. It was actually cool that I, I finished the song before I realized that, you know, I wasn't really in love and uh, it hasn't really been the experience that I thought <laughs> there was going to be. But at least, you know, I got the song out of it. Right now it's the, it's the last song of the album and it's also the last song I, I wrote and, and recorded for the album so I can basically say goodbye to you on, on, on the emotion that I really left the album with. It's uh, very refreshing for me and it's uh, also very exciting because it's something that I've really never done before and it's the first time I come out you know, with an album like this. <laughs>